How are y'all be doing K Trap for Kamora Trap, episode 5 with the Scrambler guys, Rashad, this is Anthony, and let's scoop back so Anthony can come on the map, so I can come on the map. Alright, so there's a couple entries to the K Trap. So let's say we're standing, uh, and you're able to get a Kimura, and let's say he's got his hands uh, gripped together. So, your hands gripped together. So that I wasn't able to clear it behind his back. So his hands are not gripped together. Let's go. I can just put it behind his back. So let's say he's got it gripped together, so I'm not gonna finish it from standing. So if you have your Kimura grip, uh, the basic one is to get the near side leg and get a butterfly hook. So butterfly hook, he's gonna send the outside, you're gonna drop your butt to the ground. And no, no, no I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna drop my butt to the ground and I'm gonna kick him over. And then we land in what I would call the kick drop. So that's one entry. So second one, this one is usually if uh, maybe you don't want to sit your butt to the ground. Um, if you don't think you can flip them over, this is a really good one if you don't think you can flip them over. Actually, this is what can happen if you can't flip them over, but you can do it on purpose. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get him to let go of his hand by spiking his head on the mat. And so this one, you don't really need to get this up here. Usually get this one, your near side leg, lower. And you're pretty much going to drop onto the hammer arm, or the near side arm. But, cause he's there, he's gonna land on his side. So if it was just me by myself, it would be like this. But he's right here. He's gonna have some options, like he might try and roll, for example. But what I really want is for him to break fall with the other hand, so that I can try and work the Kumura. Cause otherwise his head is gonna hit the mat. Boom, got it. And this time I let it go. Well, I still have it here for like an hour lock finish. You can get it behind the back. But that's the second entry. Or well, the second thing I would do if I had a Kamara from standing. Oh, more lightage. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's all good. The next one is from Open Guard. So you're playing Open Guard? And you just roll over, and as you're rolling over, you try and tap the arm. Uh, it's nice if they're coming forward, so you might do that by pushing. He comes forward, and now I'm in. Uh, I'll consider this K trap as well. K trap, I would just consider usually um, having a Kimura, not really in a position where you can finish it, and their back is on the mat. And you don't have side control, otherwise that would be like side control, come on, half guard, come on. So those are my three favorite entries. So let's say we do, let's say we start off with what you can follow up with. If you do the rolling Kimura from open guard pass. So the one we just did, so let's try to push, and then he tried, so if he doesn't resist that, then I can start working like top turtle from the previous video. So he's gonna, he's gonna push back into me when I push into him. So when he pushes back, boom, now I'm behind him with the Kimura. So the first option I will go for, you have to try and get under, well you don't have to try and get under this uh, arm, and I'll show why. But I prefer to go under this arm. So I can get under the non kimura arm and hook this leg. Now I have a cross body. I can start working like a power half scenario. And I can use that to try and get this arm out behind his back. And you also always have the option if you don't want to do power half. As you're working the hammer lock, which is just a one handed kimura, to start working a rear naked. But. Usually he's gonna pick one to defend, so let's say you start defending um, the rear naked. And then you start 
putting both hands on the Kumar, and hopefully both your arms are stronger than his one arm, unless he's really heavy. But another option that I like is to go for like a guillotine grip with a rear naked hand. And if he's not defending this, so you always have the option to go for this. Let's say you're swinging the arm. You can go for a bow constrictor, which is what I heard it called Neil Melanson. Or it's pretty much just a sideways guillotine. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show it on Anthony and I'll show after what I'm doing. So I'm going to start getting my guillotine in. And I'm kind of sideways on him. I'm going to try and lift him off the mat. So I was doing a little gentle, but I actually put more force on him more quickly than I should have. But so if your side is on them, so let's have a cross body. At my guillotine. The guillotine normally goes under the Adam's apple. This one kind of goes under the side of the neck and the Adam's apple. And it's a pretty good grip around their head. Meaning like, if this was like, I don't know, WWE or something, you can literally just pick them up and spike them. But when you're picking them up like this, it puts a lot of pressure on the choke and even uh, neck wrench. So it's a very brutal. So I'm back in the crossbody, sit out. So another nice thing about this, gonna be even more brutal, is you can start going for a dragon sleeper, which is basically like an inverted rear naked or inverted guillotine. So you're trying to get your other hook in. And then it's gonna, if you can feed it under their throat, it's a pretty clean choke. But if you can't feed it under their throat, you just start cranking. It's gonna be a pretty solid neck crank. I wanna go for the neck crank on him. That one, you should ask the ref before you go for it. But I have confirmed that face locks are considered rear naked. So if you're considering going for a rear face lock, that's always nice. Face lock is just my first option on rear nakeds. So if he's defending a rear naked by keeping the chin down, instead of staying low, which is gonna go right on this area of his chin, you just lift up a little bit, so you get over his teeth, and then you start applying pressure, and the sub comes much faster. And I don't wanna do it quickly on him because it's just gonna crush your teeth. But there's a lot of finishes with the rear naked that I like off of, um, that cage trap position because of the different leg configurations. Like you have your crossbody rear naked, or you can go for dragon sleeper bow constrictor. But let's say you don't have your hooks in. Like you can get your hooks in for the dragon sleeper or for the rear naked. But let's say you don't even have your hooks in, but you still want to go for your rear naked. So let's say I push him and he pushes back into me, and I'm behind him, and I want to force um, a sit out. So if he's falling on his side like this, it's not a big deal. You can literally just crunch him up, and now you got your sit out scenario. So if I'm going for my rear naked and he's defending my legs coming in, so I can't, well, let me go to the previous step. So I was saying, I like to go under to get that cross body hook. If you go over, it's not a big deal. You can still go over. The issue about going over is you can try and catch my leg, so go under my leg as you go, and then try and come out for like a single leg. Yeah, and now we're in a fight. Like I have a Kimura here, and he's trying to finish a single leg. So if possible, when I'm going for that cross body hook, I like to go under this arm so it's not an option. And it's pretty easy. Like if he digs his, he comes to this side. If he digs his arm in, I have a knee here. I can slide this. <laughs> Unless he's like really strong, you should be able to slide your knee under. Okay, let's well, say I'm going for the rear naked. So let's say he's defending the arm, and I've determined it's solid enough that I can abandon this and start fighting for my rear naked. And I don't want to go for hooks. So there's a couple options. My preferred option is to start making him pretty much kiss his genitals. That's what you think about. Uh, like if you've seen like dogs do that or something. You're going to start leaning your shoulder. Do all the same rear naked finishing sequences. You're going to start leaning your shoulder into the back of his head. And he's going to really crunch his posture. Now, if he pushes back into me, that's a great moment to fall back with it and get your hooks. 
Or why do you block it? I mean, uh, right triangle. Well, looks for points first, right? So now another option, if you want to start falling back first, instead of uh, pushing forward first, or instead of trying to get your hooks in, like maybe you don't care about the points, is as you are going back, try and get his head into his sternum. So I'm gonna start walking backwards, and I'm gonna start trying to make him face his own chest. So I'm, as I'm going back, I'm trying to make his face look down at his own chest. That's gonna cut off any space in his neck. Another fun one, and this one is especially like, if he's trying to get his back to the mat. So let's say he tries to get this side of the back to the mat. You can start working what I call a no arm triangle. Cause it's gonna finish like an arm triangle, but you don't have his arm in there. You good Anthony? Yeah. For a small neck crack. So that's a good follow up if they intentionally try and put their back to the mat. So depending on the reaction, like we try and put their back to the mat, if they're pushing forward or pushing back, and you can nudge them to give you the opposite reaction. So if you push forward, he's probably gonna push back so you can get what you want on the second, second sequence. Okay, so let's say you're uh, seated. So this time, as I go for my rolling Kimura, instead of him staying upright, he's gonna fall back so that his back is on the mat. So let's say, for example, I did it without pushing forward. So he sees it coming, so he decides to fall back as it's happening. So come back, we'll do it at the same time. So you fall back, boom. So now you're gonna be in like side control. So I would hold this for a couple seconds to just so you can get your points. The first, well, I'll show, I'll show two. So one that I like is if you get your knee by his head and his arm. And if possible, you don't want to have to deal with his frame on the inside. So get the, get the knee near his head away from him towards his hip. And you start locking it up. So as you come here, so you're going to plant his wrist to the mat and even get your elbow. And you're going to start walking your arms towards his head. And right now I'm sliding it, but it's gonna be like quick short motions. So like. And that's the one that I saw when I'm still rolling. The other one I call it like the Janitor Kumara because that's the version that clicked with me the most, the one that he showed. But you can just call it the standard Kumara finish too. Is when you start trying to step over their head and expose the back. So I'm gonna try and expose his back as I step over his head. And now that his back is exposed, I'm gonna start riding his hand towards his opposite shoulder. So that's if you get to side control. Okay, so go back to where you were. And let's actually have you come here so that I can go there. Also, we need to move further away. So if I'm here, if, if you can start trapping this arm, so let's say I push it, let's say I have you come over there so that you're looking toward, you're on our headline. So this arm here, whether you got by the wrist or the elbow, and you can also let go here. I'm gonna plant this to the mat to start setting up a crucifix. So boom, my chin near his hip goes over the arm, switch over, I'm going to chop, this hand is going to go towards his wrist, bend it over, and now if you can see it's in my hip, and then I'm just going to start leaning his wrist towards his chest with my shin pointed down into his arm. And I don't got to tap, which is fine with me, at least it's more painful grip on him as I start working. Um, the Kumara. So 
Okay. So now say I pull him up to his side to get my knee over. So let's say uh, you're grabbing your own hand. So you just rack him up and then you get your knee over. And now you have what I call the sideways. Him on his side, come on. So if you can break the grip, like for example, I'll get my right hand and get at his grip. And I'm gonna try and cut it like as if I have a heel hook going. Let me break it. So boom, and then you can just finish it behind him. Go back. If you really wanted that to work, I would start like trying to punch this instead of doing a gentle motion or trying to chop it really hard. Not like a pressure slow, but quick, quick jabbing pressure. Another option is to pretty much go for like a bicep slicer. So I'm gonna start bringing his wrist towards me so that the space between his wrist and his shoulder is cutting off as I'm digging my um, wrist into his bicep and I'm gonna lift my wrist into the sky as much as I can. Okay. So he tapped, but somebody else might just let go because the only reason why he's gonna tap is because he's holding on to it. So if he lets go, then he just go for the Kimura. But let's say he doesn't uh, let go. I show my l lower favorite ones, but I still go for them because if you if you just go for your favorite, they'll know what you're going for. So it's good to mix it up. So first one that I like is a Trico Plata. So you're gonna wanna hold on to this uh, like a hammerlock style. And you wanna track his legs. And as long as you're tracking his legs, you can step over, boom. Then you're gonna get the hand that was a hammer hand, start grabbing your own thigh. Get this, get the leg by his hip to the ground, the shin, while the leg that's by his head is gonna start posting away. And you're gonna get down. And then you just turn your hips so that his elbow starts going to the sky. And what's pretty dangerous or pretty nasty about this one, I never cleared his grip. You have a lot of power here. I never tried to clear his grip. You actually, this cool, this grip is there. That makes it easier to step over. And you have a lot of range of motion to break that arm. Okay, go back to your side. So boom, he's got his grip again. So another option is you do the step over but you feed the hand that's grabbing the wrist under his arm so that you can start switching legs. So maybe you can do it in the middle of a trickle flat up because he's defending it. And then you start trying to get, again, the shoulder to the ground by driving your shin to the mat, the one by his head. And this one is gonna post away. And this one, I'm getting him to tap pretty early because I would wanna keep getting his I would want to keep getting his uh, back flat to the mat, and then I will start doing the hip turns. Now, the trickle plotter, you can finish from guard if he comes up into it. The brado plotter, you can do the same thing, but another thing that I like about the brado plotter, let's say, uh, let's say you're driving into me. You can start scissoring your legs together, grab like a figure four, and a rear naked grip on this hand. Pull his elbow towards you, and as you're doing that, start turning your wrist up to the sky, and then start finishing this like a triangle. So squeeze it together, together. So that's a bicep slicer if he comes up on the Verado Plata. But my favorite one is going for essentially like a whole series that I do off of the scissor leg. So if he's on his side, to go for the scissor leg, you try and fall over with your legs wrapped around his head. So you're on your side. And you're grabbing your hands. This is really perfect if they're grabbing their hands together because now their neck is gonna be exposed. You good? So what I wanna do is try and um, get my inside of my kneecaps to be lined up with his throat. So that as I fall over, the inside of my knee to line up with his throat. And then to finish, the top leg goes under your bottom, oh, the top leg goes under your bottom leg. And you're gonna squeeze your knees together. At the same time, you're gonna rotate your hips inward, like so. 
<clears throat> so this is outward rotation. This is closing your knees together. This is rotating your knees. And that's not really gonna get the finish, that just sets it up. And the real finish comes from stomping the top leg down towards your bottom leg. And just like with other chokes, if he tries to defend it by putting his chin down, you just go over his mouth. And I'm not gonna do the face lock here, but it's pretty mean. Now, let's say he starts trying to get his hand on the inside of the, of the scissor leg. So there's two things you can do. One is what I learned as the Ryan Hall Super Kimura something along those lines. You get the handles grabbing the wrist to feed under. And now both of these grab and start using both hands to pull this out. And then you can just finish it like a kumara. The other one, you hold on to the kumara, grab this so that you can let him pull it off, but you step over and you got a triangle. Now the triangle you can try and finish, but it's a little unreliable for me. But that's fine. You still have this, the Ryan Hall kumara here. And you also have um, an Americana here, or a Kamara here, depending on which way he puts the arm that's on the inside. But while you're doing that, you can just squeeze your legs and you might just tap to the choke. But it's gonna create a lot of urgency for him. Because he has to worry about both arms and a choke coming. The belly down Kamara is also one that I really like. <coughs> so. If we landed like in this scenario and grab your hands together, and if you're able to break the grip, and like I said before, to break the grip, you'd want to like do like a, not like a slow pry, but like a quick pry. Get this to the mat, his wrist to the mat. Get your elbow to the mat, the elbow to grabbing his wrist. And the hip that's under his head, is gonna start switching to his shoulder. And you're gonna keep pressure on the shoulder, keep pressure on the elbow that's on the wrist. And then all you have to do is flare this elbow up, the elbow that's grabbing your own wrist. And this has a lot of space to go up, so it can be a pretty solid break. And you may have noticed that I like to keep my knee under his head so that you can start fishing for north-south chokes. Or if you ever want, you can always start walking him back up towards the cross body from earlier. The other thing is he might try and come up. So let's say I didn't really get good pressure on his shoulder. So let's say I did break a grip. So he's trying to come up and he's gonna turn into me. So you have to still try and get pressure on his shoulder. And if you can do that, you can still finish it like before. So you have pressure on his shoulder and just turn your, the wrist that's grabbing your own wrist, the elbow up. The other option is if you're grabbing your hands together and I start going for that and starts trying to come up, so right here, you're gonna take the knee, my left knee, and slide it in so that I can start working my back take. And th go back, go back. One thing that's nice, you might think like, oh, it's gonna be hard to get the bottom leg in. You have like a power half scenario, so your elbow's in his head. So it's gonna make it a lot easier to drive him over to get your other hook in. All right, that's it. So next should be uh, top half guard, I believe. If you learned something, give me a like. Thank you.